Hi everyone, we're back with Cup of Tea with Rick G and we're going to do something completely off the wall today and I, I thought it might be a great idea to invite my lovely wife along and do an interview together on how we work together as a couple because Lorraine has a very intricate role with our new era business and our new era group and I thought maybe it would be a great idea to ask Lorraine to come along and sort of share some thoughts on the best tips that we can give you if you're working with a family member or your spouse. Hello, Lorraine. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank That's you. That's very emphasised. Hello. I'm as good as I was this morning when we met. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think you've done a cup of tea with Rick G before. No. Um, so let's get straight into it. We've been working together now for a long time, on and off. And I think that our working relationship is, when we're at work, we're at work, aren't we? Um, and it is very different to our relationship when we're at home. But we work well together because we, um, you know, we know the boundaries, we know um, how we can react to each other. For those that have just started maybe in property and those that are going into working together as a couple, what do you think the best tips you could give them, you know, in your experience on how, you know, how it won't end up in divorce, I suppose? In tears, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple of things. I think, I mean, we have been working together a long time. Now, if you think yeah. about it, we've been working together since I was 16. Yeah. Um, since Lorraine was 16, folks. <laughs> 16, by the way. She... And, and that was, you know, in a in a, uh, an environment where it wasn't our own business. We um, I'm trying to tell the viewers about that, then, so you know, so they understand what that was. Oh right. So um, we we met when I was working as a waitress. Um, Rick she was. She was working as a waitress in. A no, you're not allowed to say I'm that. Not, sorry, I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds it's it's immediately quite sexy. We're gonna have a first cup of tea with Rick G argument. <laughs> hey, let's do it. Let's have a, let's have a round it. live. Yeah. <laughs> you saw it here first. Um, I'm sorry, so you were working as a waitress um in the Fox uh, just down the road from me. Yes, okay. yeah. And so, I was there as a um I was a relief manager. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we were working for somebody else's businesses together. So um, it was kind of both of our roles were quite um, straightforward. It was quite easy to understand whether the boundaries were what, what each other was doing. Um, and, you know, that's when our relationship started. So it was kind of um, it was, I suppose, a unique uh, situation. But it's probably where a lot of people do meet. A lot of people do meet at work and in the working environment. So it's probably not um, that uncommon. But I think over the years, we've learned to work with each other in our own business, which is a completely different stress level because in your own business, it becomes your own money and it's not quite, this is my role, this is my task, this is my barrel of jobs to do today. It, it's kind of like, it's our, our business, our money, our finances, our future that's been impacted. So it is very different once you get into your own business. And I think a lot of people want to do that that's the dream isn't it mm. we see lots of mentees come through our programs where they they want to come on and they want the financial freedom they want the time freedom but of course then as soon as they've achieved that the next thing they want to do is bring the partner in so um, and I see a lot of partners who are motivated by getting one or the other out of a really hard stressful corporate role so coming into business, working together is often the dream, but managing it. So how important do you think it is having defined roles? So when people do come in, as you say, so you know, you're in property, you go and give up perhaps your job, then you want your partner to be able to be uh, in the business as well. Would you say that, you know, let's just do it and then you define your own roles by default because people will fall into positions? Or do you think it's it's much better to um, to sit down and define those roles so the expectations are clear from the start, so there are no, um, you know, there's no bad air mm. between the, between couples. So, for example, um, you know, when they start, maybe it's Monday morning, so you've got husband and wife. Husband's been doing it a while, knows what he's doing. Wife's just come in and is kind of just jumping in all over everything. Do you think... What's the best way do you think would work for? Were you laughing? Are you laughing at me now? <laughs> it's a really long question. I do long questions. <laughs> I've tuned I put, out. I, I, I put about five <laughs> questions in one question. So it's a police tactic. Okay. So do you th um, let's backtrack. Let me. Yeah, do, let me. Let me. Talk. Define roles. Important or not? Um, yes, I don't think it's important as actually getting your finances right to begin with, because it, it's important to have defined roles. But then it's important to muck in when you need to. So I think it's more important to understand your values first, you know, what each other's good at. 
and what skill sets you have. So but shouldn't you already know that already? Know what your values are if you're married or if you're living together? Uh, I don't know. It depends, doesn't it? Like some people um, discover, you know, that they're more than happy to put their whole life on social media and other people... I, I don't understand anyone that does that. <laughs> <laughs> and some people don't want to do that. And that's about maybe their security values and how they, how yeah, they want to... Yeah, but you'd already know that, wouldn't you? Before you go into working together, you'd know that if your partners want to share stuff on social media, surely. I, it depends though, doesn't it? It depends how people see it. So like social media becomes um, about business. When you're not in a business, running a business, most people see social media as a waste of time and entertainment, something they do posting um, pictures of your tea <laughs> yeah and posting their lunch hour or post their dog or their kids that's right dog pics are good yeah i know but it's kind of it's that whole social media thing is is different so i think when you get into business together we kind of went through that didn't we yeah you discover new stuff about each other about the whole social media thing yeah we let's, did yeah let's just get it out there shall <laughs> we? so <laughs> when i was building um this group actually um right back in the day several years ago it was costing a lot of time because I was putting a lot of effort into building the group, making it value. And it was pretty much all I did over the weekend and um, in the evenings. And I think, you know, Lorraine uh, at that time didn't see why I was doing it and didn't understand really what the purpose was and what the end game was. So we did have a couple of arguments about me spending a lot of time on social media. Yeah, and I think you have to respect that I was in my own consultancy business then. So I ran my own consultancy business. I was still in a very professional and corporate world, um, consulting for clients, helping them. And actually, things like LinkedIn were the place that you went and used social media. Social media was actually um, w wasn't seen as somewhere that you know you could actually advertise or push a consultancy. Now, my view has completely changed on that mm. um, because I think social media is about ra raising awareness of you and your brand. And if you are a business, then you should be putting it on there. But at that point in time, for me, LinkedIn was probably the only place where I would have. Um, where it would have been, and I've made a lot of money out of LinkedIn, so I understood the relationship there, mm. but I didn't see Facebook in the same way. I suppose you pick one social media platform that yeah. works. I don't really do LinkedIn that well. I do do it, but I don't think I do it that well. So we get loads of questions about um, how we manage our time, because we've got a lot of businesses, we've got a lot of plates that we're spinning, um, of course we've got staff as well that we have to manage, and lots of people, um, Ask me, you know, because we've got two young children and it's, and, you know, it's no secret that our son's got a disability. But people keep saying, how do you do all of this? How do you manage all these businesses, work together as a couple and run a family? I don't know. How do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, it's about having systems and order. Hmm. So, you know, at home, we know exactly where everything is, as stupid as that sounds. So we're very minimalistic. We don't have so much clutter. We don't have... Um, you know, even things like paperwork, it's all scanned in. So we're very systemized so that we, when, we know, when we know we want something, we go and find it. So I think those systems are, are built into our everyday lives. I think it's about good calendar management. Um, yeah. We were talking this morning about how... Sometimes that can be a bit tricky though, can't yeah. it? Because sometimes our calendars aren't aligned and we miss something. Yeah. And that one appointment will just throw everything else because you've got something planned. It might mean a trip to London or, or I've got something planned. might mean a trip to Oxford um, and it requires one or the other or both of us. And then if we miss that, then the whole week can kind of be turned upside down, can't it? Yeah, and, and I think it, it does need those... You need to put like the big, the big holiday stuff, the big personal stuff in first. So the things that are important. So the um, the football um, commitments always go in the diary first. You football know, for our children's football club. For Ben's club, yeah. Um, anything that Charlotte's got on in terms of her um, theatre stuff, the singing she wants to do, all goes in the diary. Then we put our annual holidays in. Then the school holidays are put in. Then any pre-committed training days are put in. Um, and then we try and break down to having days where we focus and commit to different things. So mm. um, marketing Mondays or, yeah. you know, we kind of use simple tricks to try and um, keep the front of mind of what we're doing, don't we? We do. And sometimes, you know, I mean, we talk about marketing Monday and things like that and planning, you know, it's so key. We talk about planning all the time, you know, planning is fundamental. But try and sit down together to do a yeah. plan for the week isn't that easy is it <laughs> no, no it we kind of we put it in the diary and something happens or we have a problem at work and then that takes over and then we get you know all of a sudden then we're into wednesday and we haven't planned yeah and i think that's 
that's one of the key things that we keep saying we need to do and we're not very good at doing. Um, and I think actually because we come into work and we kind of get going, get you know, get on with the day and get on with the important stuff, and we always prioritise money making activities first. So it's quite natural for us to to, und, to undervalue the planning, but the planning is where we will save five times the effort because mm. that's what Brian Tracy says, and I think he's right. That you know, when you plan something, you do save five times the amount of time in execution. Um, and what about people that you know? <laughs> this is quite a common question. You have a row at home. You've got to go to work. You've got to spend all day together, and of course, you know, you're in an environment when you've got other people and staff sitting around. Yeah. Now, we don't row, we don't row right? <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> we don't really, do we? Um, you know, how, how do we deal with that? You normally know, so, admit you're wrong, don't you? I know, I always admit. Oh, you yeah. know what? If you want to make a relationship last as long as we have over 27 years, just admit you're wrong. Yeah. It's just the best way forward, you know, even if you're not. Yeah. Yes. Just say well. okay. So no, seriously though, um, how do how do you think we manage that? Because sometimes we Some, get a bit yeah. stressed at home with the kids sometimes, and we're running late. Sometimes it's better than others. So I I'm, I know I can. There are famous occasions which I shall not embarrass you with, um, where I know you've got stressed out and yeah. um, reacted. Yeah. Um, but that's because of the personal nature of, and it does blur. There is no way to keep both completely separate. Um, and I know there have been some very quiet days in the office where we've been in disagreement over something. Have there? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we email each other and we sit yeah. opposite each other. Or text. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, and, I, and I think it's about, you just have to learn to let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that we wouldn't have lasted 27 years if we hadn't, regardless yeah. of whether we worked together or not. And the fact is, I am always right. So, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you've done really well to accept that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, in all seriousness, it's about... I am being serious. <laughs> ...letting go of um, some of the details. And I think, you know, you have to recognise that each other will make mistakes. And we don't always do things um, perfectly. Not even you, Rick. Um, although you do strive for that. And I think it's it can be frustrating when, you, in, in, when you're in a, a relationship and working with people when you're trying to push something somewhere and you're, you have strong feelings that something's going to work. Now, one of the obvious things that comes up for me about that is that you're always striving to provide extra value, improve things and get to that perfection, aren't you? And that's just mm. your natural tendency. Whereas I'm more creative, I'll try and go off and start new things before really sometimes things are always... Then hand them over to me to And manage. hand them over to you to manage, yeah. Mm. But I think that's where we both know our strengths. And at certain points I go, I'm done. I, I can't find the energy or the strength to keep going at this anymore. And mm. you're quite good at then picking that up and, and getting it done and finished and implemented. Let's talk about energy. You mention energy quite a lot. Yeah. So um, your working day as a person, when do you think your energy peaks and troughs? I'm a bit confused about this. And I think it, it's because... I think seasonal stuff affects us more than we realise. So in the summer, I'd say I'm up at five o'clock most days, as you know, and then I'm I'm on email. I'm doing. Um, I'll take the dogs out. I'll run or, or something like Brings that. Brings me a cup of coffee every morning, but I'll feel blessed, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm an early riser, but then um, in the winter, I tend, you know, I li- I miss the. Um, the daylight and the daylight is a natural trigger for me to wake up so I do miss that so I would say I'm biased towards the morning so but actually sometimes mm. in the winter that does slip and I think that's what you mean about the mornings because at the moment you know I'm finding it hard to get up at five o'clock yeah um, because of the weather but in the summertime it's completely different yeah, exactly. my energy levels really are um, they, they start to deplete about three o'clock I'm done because we generally finish work around about three um, to go back, we carry on working then from home just to wait for the kids because we have got the kids yeah. to manage and to look after. But you know what? Having families is normal. You know, it's not a new thing. People have families. People work together. Um, I think we've, you know, we've always worked very well together. And I think, you know, we know where that line is drawn. We do take work home as well, though, don't we? We do talk about work a lot in front of the yeah, kids. And the kids, kids generally, yeah. they get really peed off with it. They don't like us talking about work at all when we're at home. They yeah. don't understand it, do they? I mean, Ben, for example, if I've got got a webinar I normally have probably two webinars a week I don't do one every night but the minute we mentioned a W word at home it's 
Oh, because that means he can't that use is. the internet. Yeah, and and yeah. he values using the internet to play Fortnite or PUBG more than doing a webinar to create value to help people bring into our community. So, yeah, and I think I, I'm not sure they really peed off with us talking about business because actually, if you, it's only when they want our attention. So I think sometimes you know our kids find it, you know, and that's all kids ever want, isn't it? They just want your time. So I think sometimes it they find it hard to get our attention when they're competing with, you know, mm. they're almost this third child, the business. Um, and that, that kind of creates them that challenge, or how do I get the attention of mum and dad when they're so engrossed and so engaged in, in the business chatter that goes on. Mm. But then our, I think our kids know a lot more, you know, most Charlotte would understand at the age of 10 the concept of, buying a house below market value below market value <laughs> renting it out yeah. and somebody paying rent yeah. and she knows the names of books and rich dad poor dad and yeah. all that you know 10 the years co- old you know the commitment that um tenants make to landlords and, and what they had a conversation yesterday i overheard them they were in the kitchen and charlotte asked uh, what eviction means and ben explained to charlotte verbatim the eviction process <laughs> he's 14 and she's 10 she's gone away knowing now what eviction means and what the section 21 process is i think that's awesome yeah <laughs> but i think that that may not be from us that's probably from um that tv program um oh, uh, don't pay take it away don't pay take it away uh, yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. uh, cool. ben likes watching that so so you know um i think um i hope that's inspired a few people on how you can work together as a couple i think we do it really well we're here every day working together. It is important that you draw that line when you go home and you do try and switch off and you do have that relationship. And we do that on weekends because we don't work weekends. You know, we're very precious of our time, aren't we? Weekends and evenings, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, and I think it's important to recognise as well, it's not achievable for everybody. Mm-hmm. And if it's at the cost of your relationship. Hey, and don't, you know, if you go out and start working together off the back of watching Lorraine and I, <laughs> and then you get divorced, <laughs> Um, it's not our fault, all right? That's something fundamentally wrong in your relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Lorraine, thank you. It's been great. I think we've had a nice cup of tea, and though we haven't even got a cup of tea with us this morning. No, it's about time you made me one. Yeah. Folks, I hope that was all right for you. Just a little bit of fun there, just to see, you know, show you what the uh, behind the scenes of our company. And I don't know if you've met Lorraine or not. Lorraine's also got her own um, business when she helps people um, create reoccurring income online. Uh, so head over to the Facebook page. It's called Being a Reoccurring Income Online. Reoccurring Income Online. So if uh, you're interested in that or you're interested in having a chat with Lorraine, tag her in on the bottom. Thanks for that, folks. See you on the next episode of Cup of Tea with Rick G.